Welcome to the Teacher's Pep Rally. My name is Erin King, and I'm surrounded by friends and fellow educators, Letitia Jones, Pete Bush, and Fred Abley. We often find ourselves having so many conversations about work and the education system that we thought it might be something you want to talk about too. Sometimes we peek behind the curtain to reveal the hard truths and struggles, but this space is mostly to lift each other up, collaborate, and celebrate. So put on your spirit wear and grab a bleacher. Let's talk about life and learning. Welcome to the Teacher's Pep Rally. If you missed our last episode with Joseph Hamer about ways we can support mindfulness in the classroom, please go back and check it out. Our guest today is an assistant professor and communication arts coordinator at Luzerne County Community College. He has over 28 years of experience in AR, VR, and XR. That's augmented reality, virtual reality, and extended reality. This combo of educator, entrepreneur, and digital designer has made for an interesting journey to which I imagine led to being CEO of BizVibe. So grab your Oculus as we welcome to the Teacher's Pep Rally, Kevin Jones. Woo-hoo! Hey, hey, Kevin. Hey. It's nice to be on here. Thank you, thank you guys for having me. I'm excited about our conversation. Yeah, we are too. We are too. I never thought I was going to get to say all those things in like one little uh, paragraph, but that was exciting. Five years ago, I wouldn't have said those things either. That's <laughs> crazy how the technology changes quick. Wow. Um, and I feel like you're really kind of on top of it. So can you tell us, because we're going to mm-hmm. assume that our listeners out there, our colleagues, have different understanding of what AR, VR, and XR mm-hmm really means. Can you explain that to us? Yeah, sure. So, and it's funny that you're asking this because uh, I, I, I teach college, as you said, so I had classes today. And one of the classes that I do, we actually do a project that's AR based and it's World War II. And each student has to pick out from the beach to uh, Germany, a village, and they do all the textures for a model. And then they build the actual card. Like if we had a uh, a client that was a museum, in, like in England, and so we make these little cards that talk about the different area. And when you scan it, their picture of their house pops up, and they wow. have to study the architecture and everything. Mm-hmm. So I was explaining today because some of the students are like, "So is it VR? Is it AR? Is it MR? Is it XR?" <laughs> Is it IR? What is all the realities? And I'm like, oh, okay. So let's let's explain this. So uh, VizVibe, my company, we really focus on what's called augmented reality. And what augmented reality is, is the ability to overlay content, videos, models, uh, pop-up images over the existing world that you're in. So let's say that you're walking down the street, you hold up your phone, and somebody used our, I'm just going to do a little punt, AR AR Launchpad platform, (laughs) and they made their sign a target. A target's what people scan. So if you hold it up, you're able to see their menu pop up in your phone, and you can like just go through their menu and order, or you can see a video of the chef creating the plate that's happening right now. So augmented reality is overlaying content that's in front of you in your world, okay? So if I have a piece of paper, and instead of it just being a lesson that I'm going to hand out to my students, now what they could do is if I have a photo, let's say, of something historical, and I'm teaching history, so maybe I have a photo because I've gone to, and we'll talk about this, I'm sure, later on, but I go to Gettys. I'm a history geek, so we go to Gettysburg all the time, and <laughs> all the battlefields. And, my, and I take we take our kids, and you know they're, they're like, if mom and dad are taking us camping, we're going somewhere educational. But <laughs> let's say I took a picture of the battlefield, and then I shot a little video on my phone of that actual place. What I can do then with AR is when the students reading about that photo I put on my material to hand out to them. I got a little paragraph about one of the the battles. If they scan it, my video pops up right on the page. And now I have another layer of engagement that reiterates what I covered in the classroom. 
okay? Uh, VR is you immerse yourself, like you were saying, the Oculus goggles and stuff. VR, you immerse yourself into a new world. So what happens is you are now, when you put those goggles on, you could be on the moon. And as you turn around, you're, you're seeing the moon and so on. And then you get into the variations. There's a couple of different ones. So MR is mixed reality. Um, you have immersive reality. You were saying uh, 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 XR, which is extended and so on. What they basically come down to is mixing augmented reality and virtual reality together. That's like a mix of them. Uh, one of the, the interesting things about this field uh, in the AR industry is um, as people are, are using it, what tends to happen with technology, and you guys have probably experienced this even talking with other educators, uh, what happens with technology is people tend to jump on it like really quick right. or the complete opposite. They're like, get that away from me. Get that away from me. I don't want it, right? Kevin, just met. Don't talk about me, buddy. That's all right. You know, we'll talk about AR Launchpad later on because you won't be afraid of that platform. I I think I like that and the goggles sound cool, too. You will not be afraid of that. But uh, so that's really the difference. If if you're looking at all of them, uh, the two main ones is augmented reality, which means you're overlaying things in your world. And VR is virtual reality, and that means you get immersed in a world that somebody created. And then when you get any of those other ones, it's really just a mixing of them for an experience is what it is. So virtual reality, I think about like Ready Player One or Fred, the Star Wars game at Disney oh, Springs, right? The boy. right. And we AR, went on that, Fred. Yeah. AR, I just realized for some adults that maybe enjoy some wine 19 crimes that oh, yeah. is ar isn't it kevin have you that seen that where you can scan right. talk about history you can scan my my family's irish you can scan over yeah. uh the criminals on the that are on the label and yeah. they will speak to you on your phone when you scan it and tell you their story of how they ended up being sent over to australia how did yeah. i not know that this yeah, is amazing more, yeah. it gets more and more real with each bottle yeah <laughs> And we it just does. had a bottle with Snoop at our house. Uh, Snoop <laughs> was the bottle we had, and it was it was just. I mean, the pictures are great, right? But I didn't realize that was a component of it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, the the technology recently that really blew this open was Pokemon Go. Yeah, right, sure. right. Because that's all augmented reality, um, overlaid in reality, right? So, uh, Pokemon Go was really the the thing that launched it. But you know what's it, it's funny on an educational side. AR and like VR, like it's been around since the 60s. And people are like, what? And it's like, yeah, the tech, the technology was too big and expensive, just like the personal computer. But if you if you search and you look for like AR or VR from the 60s, there was a sci- uh, 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 computer scientist that it created it. And when you talk about like the headsets are nice, you can put your phones in now. This thing hung from the roof. And it was like a big like iron type thing and it had lines but it that form of it was created all those years ago and like anything wow. else it takes time for the technology to get up to snuff with uh a point where the price point could be low enough for everyone to have it and we're kind of at that point right now i mean if you think about the uh, penetration of digital devices and smartphones and tablets, uh, the majority of people have them or they have some access to them. And that's the game changer. The more people use those devices, the more you're going to see AR and VR and the mixed realities coming into your, your world. It's, it's just going to happen. Um, the big companies are are really putting a lot of money into it. And if you do it the right way, which I would love to talk to you guys about, like our approach to it and stuff is completely different than a lot of other companies. And however, whatever direction we want to go in tonight, I'm more than happy to answer any of your questions that you have. Good. 
this is like another geek central kind of talk because uh i could see so many great uses of it and i'd, I'd yeah I'd, maybe it's appropriate for this call or maybe it's not but kevin i could see easily the question that pops into my head is where are we now with the tech being widely adopted but then there's the content creation barrier right that's always been the thing we get to the tech where it becomes and it's in everybody's hands yep. and then the next phase is content creation and and that's where we you know we've seen the evolution whether it was websites or whether it was um you know maybe some element of, of game development but now here we are with ar vr for it to be able to be useful it has to be, you have to be able to create content that's engaging and mm -hmm. educational and, and everything else that's that's really it, i never really thought of it that way though like with that space that's interesting yeah. and Fred, uh, uh, you and I have had a couple conversations uh, yeah. in passing. We've met at some of the Tech Bridge stuff and and that sort of thing. But um, yeah, it, it's interesting because if you look at the industry in a whole, and the way that I come about it is, I'm an educator, but I'm also a media guy, and I'm also a tech guy. So uh, I I wanted to build a platform for anyone that had a, a cool idea to be able to create amazing content, especially teachers and students. Yeah. But I wanted to take the barriers down from all the other places that you can go and try. Like you're saying, Fred, like there are steps of professional software that people automatically think like, oh my gosh, I need thousands of dollars of software, or I got to learn this new right. platform to create augmented reality experiences. I'd really like my students because once the students start using AR and the teachers start utilizing it. And I have some examples I'll share. I, I could share with you of some of our, our teachers and, and partner schools that are working with us and the, the content that they're doing in K through 12 is amazing. Uh, I really wanted to create that platform. And that's why we built AR Launchpad. I don't want the sixth grade history teacher or math teacher that has an idea that they want to be able to reiterate the content that they, they taught either remotely or in the classroom and then go to, to create AR because they know that that's the point of engagement for the students, right? Right. And be like, oh my gosh, I got to like learn this. Like I got to drag this over here. I got to resize this. I got to make that, right? right? I mean, those of us in the, in the content creation industry, we could do that with our eyes closed all day long because we've been doing it. Like Aaron said, I, I, I can't, it, it is 20, it, it is many years I've been in the industry, which is every time I up that in LinkedIn, I'm like, it can't be that long. It can't be that long, you know? Yeah. Um, but our platform that we created for the educators and students and on the consumer facing side literally is four clicks and you have an AR experience that's live on the app. That's really important. And I think uh, maybe it's because where we are now with tech, because it's so, you know, not so, I don't want to say seamless, but it's definitely so expansive now in, in so many industries, especially education. Well, I think of the smart board, right? How many smart boards were deployed in classrooms where they became glorified bulletin boards because mm -hmm. teachers, one, didn't know how to use it or maybe it wasn't hooked up correctly. And now I, I love hearing what you just said because it's an awareness that I think a lot of companies stumble with. They create yeah. this great classroom tech, and then I don't know if it's a fumbling through training or a fumbling through, through the sales pitch or, or whatever it might be, but there was always that barrier. Once you got in the classroom, you really never got it to realize what yes. you wanted to use it for. And now it sounds like you've created something that's allowing you to deploy something, but you've done it being mindful of the creator, in this case, the teacher. Yeah, because that's I've cool. been on both sides of that table, Yeah, right? right? So I, I've been on the creative side, and, and I learned that if, if you're going to create something, you need to listen to the feedback of the people that you're creating it for, because that's what happens a lot, guy, uh, Fred, is, you know, people come up with a great idea. And this is the thing about innovation. Like, they come up with a great idea, but they think that they solved the, the problem without talking to the people that they need the problem solved for, Right. And right. so what happens is, I, I, I know from being in the classroom when tablets were first out and that sort of thing, like it was the big move, right? Like, oh my gosh, we got to get tablets in here. We got to load up the classrooms. And then 
after the tech people left, the teachers were like, it's like a it's like a paperweight. Like, what are we gonna do with it, right? And so uh, I, I came from both sides of that, and, and so I was like, I really want to do something that if somebody knows how to use Word, if someone knows how to use Publisher, if someone could pick up their phone and take a photo or film a video, they could use AR Launchpad, and that's their content. That's, that's cool. the content that the teachers are using is they're creating it on the tools they they use day in and day out. And AR Launchpad is really just a utility that gets that material that you've shared with your classes or you create for your students. And now you can have that extra layer of engagement and learning um, out of the classroom or in the classroom as well. And so I was very mindful of that as we were going through building this thing out. Um, the other thing that what is very important to me, and you guys probably know this from your experiences, is one thing I've always hated in education was a software company coming in, telling me a price, and then I go with it. And then I find out there's all these a la carte things. And the <laughs> price points go up. And before I know it, I'm like, I got this thing. I'm not exactly sure how to use it because it's so complex. And now I'm paying like all these extra fees that wasn't in the base that the salesperson sold me, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's another aspect that I learned being in education. But I also wanted to figure out uh, pricing because I know that that I'm sorry that really is bad, right? No, it sucks. You can say yeah, it sucks. Yeah, 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 it really it does. Does. We're an adult <laughs> audience, and, and, and <laughs> most educators out there know exactly what I'm talking about. So one of the things we do at BizVibe with our platform is if we work with a school or a school district, we're going to meet with you guys. We're going to find out how many views. That's how many times like. Uh, a month that you can have students look at your at your stuff, how many experiences you need for your, your teachers and students, and we're going to give you a flat rate. Because my thing is, why should we penalize teachers and students for creating amazing experiences that's continuing education? And if they have a ton of hits on those particular things, why penalize them? Let's figure out what was that secret sauce that that teacher did or what was that project because i want to share that with other teachers across the united states because that's what really empowers the student and the teacher it, it's a different model than the other companies are doing but it's important it's important especially now with budgets covid uh the not knowing like like we had a little bit of pre-discussion as we were all logging in, not knowing, like, am I going to be remote next week? A am I going to be in class? Is How long is this going to happen? Am I going to be quarantined? And the cool thing about like AR is you could use it in class remote and the teachers could do stuff and the students could have projects and do stuff. And what it does is it just continues to be organic and grow. That's neat. Mm -hmm. That's great thinking. I, I just love, Kevin, the intentionality behind it. You know, like I, I feel like it sounds like the tool is accessible, mm -hmm. right? Use. I'm going to hold you to the four clicks because I'm really, really intrigued. It totally is. It totally is. <laughs> but the intentionality about yep. the price point, um, as you were sharing, that made me think about equity, right? Like I work for the fourth, one of the largest districts in the state of Georgia. Our budget is very different. Mm -hmm. And let's say a school, a small rural district in Georgia, right? But at least we know that with, with with your product and your company, you're so mindful of it that equity becomes kind of an organic, natural, how should I put it? Just a natural outcome because you're mindful about the price. I mean, yeah. so many uh, school districts shy away, really, from mm -hmm. technology because they can't afford it. It's not why we built the platform. You know, we, the, the platform wasn't built so that we could just screw over schools uh, and uh, teachers and stuff. Uh, we really built the platform because it is a powerful tool when it's in the hands of students and teachers. I've seen it. 
I use it. I've used it. I see our partner schools and teachers using it. And when that clicks and the students are now experiencing another level, it's not replacing the, that. That's the other thing about some of the tech that we were just talking about when it came out. You know, a lot of times I've heard this pitch over the years of being a, a, a professor is, you know, well, this is just like having a, another teacher, right? And mm-hmm. it's, it's going to take over this or that. The yeah. truth of the matter is my thought on it and our company's thought on it is the teacher is the moderator. This is just a tool to help you engage. Like you have no class without a teacher. You have no experience without a teacher. Like the teachers are the ones that drive the innovation in the classroom. But if the students could pick up that mojo, if you will, now the students are innovating as well. But the core fundamental behind it is they're learning. They're learning. And you don't, like you're saying, I know exactly the feeling. Like, I've talked to schools that don't have budgets. They're, they're small districts. They're out in the middle of nowhere. And they're like, I can't, I can't do software because if you're telling me it's this price. And then three months from now, I get a surprise bill in the mail. And I have this conversation all the time with schools that we're starting to work with and that we work with and teachers is, listen. Unlike other companies that are software based, I want people to have this. As a matter of fact, I want people to have it to try. I have a free version that beats the pro version of many of our competitors for teachers for a year. Like, I believe in it so much. I want, I want to give it out. Like, literally, like, use it. And if you find that you really like it, and you think that your school is going to engage and you have and you have a big school district or a small school school district then that's when we come in as a company and say listen you can have ar and based upon the number of students you have the teachers that are going to use it cuz let's be honest some teachers are not going to use it right. right and that's okay but the ones that do start seeing like as they create content like oh my gosh I could do this. I could do that. And I already have the materials for most of this created. And so what we do is we really come in and say, this is the size of your school. This is how many teachers. This is how many students. And we give you a flat rate for the year on using it. And like, don't worry about going over anything because we're going we're gonna to work with the school district to figure out the exact amount that you need. And like I said, if you guys are like rocking it in one of your school districts, like you have like great teachers and student engagement, I'm going to actually probably come to your school and be like, hey, 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 we got a partner here because I want to know what you're doing. Where's the right, mojo, right. right? So it sounds like there's kind of two ways. There's one where it's the customizable, where people are kind of creating their own. Mm-hmm. And then there's the other side of it, which I believe is you already kind of have, I'm going to call them packages, but you already have lessons with AR embedded that teachers can go ahead and start using. So let's yeah. start with those, one of those that you've already got put together. And can you talk us through what that would look like in a classroom? Yeah, sure. So um, it, it's, we have a couple different verticals in our company. Um, and I hope that I'm answering this right for you, Aaron. If, I, if I'm not, let me know, okay? Because uh, I get passionate about this sometimes, and and I go no, so, you like, can't uh, tell. Yeah, no, you right. can't, right? Uh, so it, it's my, awesome. my, my it's, wife it's, tries it's, not to talk about any of this stuff, but she knows I'm just a big geek about it, right? Oh, it's awesome and stuff. She's in people. education too. Um, so we, you imagine our conversations at the dinner table, like oh boy. But uh, so our company has a couple of different verticals. The first one is we have the AR Launchpad platform, which allows people to create augmented reality either for education or the consumer-facing side. So we have some industries and and tourism and travel and industrial. We have those kind of clients that are using it for education in the consumer-facing side, Hmm. um, which is really interesting. Like industrial, we do... We're really... um, we got a, a couple of things that we're, we're starting to gear up for. That's actual um, AR training, safety, and learning in factories. 
based upon the machinery and stuff. Uh, rail shipping, we have we have the ability that we take their manual, and, and I know this is audio, so it's about three inches thick for those of you listening. And we're able to take that book of what they need to check on a train down to probably 100 pages. And it all has augmented reality built into the book and around the train. Like you could do stuff like that in industry. That's um, what I love, Kevin, about this real quick is that awesome. I'm, I'm not just thinking about this being an opportunity to get students engaged and to make real world connections. But also I'm thinking about, you know, what's the job situation going to be like for our future graduates? Mm-hmm. And, I, and I do think AR is going to be part of it because there's already fields that are using it. Um, you know, mm-hmm. I was reading something the other day about the space industry using it. You've got other places, paleontologists. I think I wrote medical field. Yeah, medical you know, even, even Lockheed Martin, which is not too far yeah. from yeah. me, they, they use it so that their uh, workers can literally see the instructions or see how something's going to be put together as they're putting it together. So for me, I, it's like almost real world skills for them or soft skills for whatever maybe job industry they may go into. And, and it really is. It's funny. I was just reading in an article in 2021, the top four industries where AR is taking hold is e-commerce, industrial, food services, and my favorite one, education. So wow. uh, that that's my favorite one out of them all. But <laughs> yeah. how is it being used? What what? How does food food, do, uh, food services use it? So with with food, <laughs> funny that you said. I know that. how to drop those fries at McDonald's, buddy. <laughs> no, it's funny that you say or that. Was it so, in the menu? So what we're doing, and I and I'll show you here really quick. So we have uh, partner schools, and we have uh, colleges and K through twelve schools. In school districts that we work with, uh, we have either teachers or the districts that are using our platform. And so I'm just going to do a, a shout out to uh, Lackawanna College up in oh. Grant, Pennsylvania. They're looking at ways to incorporate AR into the classroom for teaching. So it, here's a great example. Uh, with the food industry, uh, you can make your menus come alive. So like say somebody's oh. walking by and you're like, what right. is that? You can scan the menu and actually see it and see a video of the thing. But I'll show you guys this. This, and I know I, I'm showing it through you, it's the screen. This is step-by-step of how to make the cappuccino, yes. clean the machine and deliver it. But when you scan these three images, there is a 45 second video of every step on how to do each one of these. So the student now could take this. And let's say, unlike a video that you would put on YouTube, that's like five minutes long, that's not what AR is for. So what they're doing is, and this is one of the things, our, one of our other verticals, Aaron, that we're talking about is we do the consulting, we help create custom content if you need it. So. What we're doing with them is we walk them through the idea of you don't want to just sit there and put a five minute video and send a link. Or my favorite is, well, why don't you just use a QR code? Well, first of all, QR codes are ugly. Second of all, you have a ton of them in your design. They look really bad. Yes. Uh, with ours, you just put a little icon like we have a little rocket icon and that indicates like you scan it with the app. Right. And the app's free for everybody to use. Um, so with this is if I'm watching a five minute video on YouTube, I'm going to be scrubbing through it. I already know step one. I already know step five. I'm really having an issue with step three. With this, it's broken down into those individual steps. The idea for AR and learning is to lead them to the next experience and not drown them with everything at once. Because then what happens is now you have a learner of any age that is going for the value point of it. So in the food industry, it's a lot of training. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's it's funny. I think that you, yeah. Yeah. I see that. Kevin, can I throw another scenario out to you? So I'm I'm a music teacher, arts educator uh, in my school, everywhere, right? 
Live performances have not existed for almost a year. Field trips, class trips have not existed for almost a year. Yep. And we directly feed into the arts community abroad. Uh, the, the performing arts industry has been annihilated for over a year. If a client from a concert hall, a community theater, a music teacher came to you and said, what, what could I do right now with your app, with your services? What would be some of the ideas that would just get you so excited? Oh, you could do this, 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 to, st to still keep the arts alive for the kids, for the community, and for these, yeah. uh, these struggling organizations. Yeah. So, and, and that's, that's a, a good question um, because we get that question a lot, especially now, right? And one of the things that really excites me in, in some of our, our clients that we work with um, has to do with tourism, has to do with um, the foot traffic that's no longer there because of COVID. But like you're saying too, the... Um, the field trips and stuff. And we don't know when we're going to be able to do those again. Like we're probably not going to be able to do them at this year at all. Right. Even, even with things going, like if, if hopefully everyone gets vaccinated and so on. Right. Right. So with, with AR and this will transition really, really good into um, uh, an example that I have for you, Pete. So like I said, I, I'm a I'm a history buff. I've worked on documentary films, and a couple of years ago, this is like the start of this vibe and the start of AR Launchpad. So a couple of years ago, uh, Spider Martin's daughter, Spider Martin, was a famous photographer of the Selma marches in the 1960s. Uh, a, a good friend of mine, Jim Gavanis, is a is a great photographer that travels there. Um, and they wanted to do an exhibit where Spider Martin was the photographer that was just a stringer. And they sent him out to take the first march. Um, and it ended up being the three. Like a lot of people think Selma March, Selma was only one march, right? But it wasn't. There were three. And uh, he took all these photos, like 3,000 photos. And his photos really became the... Mm -hmm. The trigger for a lot of people to say, holy crap, this is going on. And then later, Lyndon Johnson passed the Civil Rights Act and so on. But the photos were coming around on a college tour she was doing. Tracy is her name. And uh, the idea was, can we, can we do like a short documentary? Because like she had all these notes and stuff from her father that how he felt when he took the photos and stuff. And Jim knew that I worked on documentary films at PBS and, and all of that sort of thing. And um, he's like, hey, do you want to do this, this documentary film uh, for Spider Martin's daughter? And I'm like, uh, yeah, let's do it. But I said, I've always wanted to do something where history is organic and it comes alive and learning comes alive. And so they were like, so what are you talking about? I'm like, I don't want to do a documentary. What I want to do is I want to create an experience. And this is one of the decks. This is going down the, um, the thing that you were talking about too, Aaron, one of our ver verticals. And inside here is a person from Selma. You have Lyndon Johnson, Martin Luther King. You have uh, Jamie Lee Jackson, which was the one killed by Sheriff Clark, which was, and, and so on. Uh, Linda Lowry. Linda Lowry was a 13-year-old girl that uh, decided to march with everyone, didn't really know what was going on, and she got maced and punched by a, a police officer, and he said, let her die. And like she was like, she was a kid, you know? Um, and I'm like, those are the experiences that students need to know. Because anyone could do a documentary, and I, I could do one with my eyes closed from A to Z, right? And the teacher could pause in the middle of it and say, See the Edmund Pettus Bridge? Did you know the Edmund Pettus Bridge is actually named? I, you're laughing. You know what I'm going to say, right? Like, everyone's like, the Edmund Pettus Bridge? But that's about the, that's the king of the Ku Klux Klan's name, for God's sakes. Like, but it's those little things that sometimes you don't get in a documentary. So I said, I'm going to, I want to, I'm going to pitch something, pitch something so radical. I want to be able to do it in little pieces that a teacher could hand out 
the individual players to the students. Mm -hmm. And when they scan them with an app, they actually see the video come alive, right? And mm -hmm. they get to hear from the voices of the people that wow. were there. And now the teacher could say, all right, everyone come to this table and lay out your cards. And now anywhere in that timeline of the three marches in, in the 1960s, a student could come in. So let's say I'm the student that has the, the uh, Lyndon Johnson card. Well, now with AR Launchpad, including with it, right? Now what could happen is as a teacher, I can say, all right, you and the person sitting next to you, Bob and, 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 and Carrie, right? Bob and Carrie, you're Lyndon Johnson. I want you to do three more cards based on what he did with the civil rights. And you guys shoot the video. And it only has to be 20 to 30 seconds. And then we're all going to come back and trade our cards because it's in the system. Mm -hmm. And now the history grows organically. And that's the same thing you could do when you are, are talking about field trips. You could actually go as a teacher, and I'll use Gettysburg as an example. So I go camping with my family to Gettysburg multiple times, and I'll be honest with you, there's a purpose behind it too, besides liking history. <laughs> Gettysburg is phenomenal. Gettysburg has been the most phenomenal testing ground for AR launch pad anyone could ever ask for, right? So God love my wife. She, she knows. So over as we were developing the platform, we would go on vacation to Gettysburg, right? And I would have my phone. And then at the campground where we have our RV, I'd have my laptop, right? And we would drive around the battlefields until we saw like where they had like people camping or somebody shooting a cannon. And I'd be like filming with my phone, right? And then we would circle back around, God love her and my kids, circle back around. And I would go up to like the monuments or the, you know, the little sign, the, the signs that are there that usually get faded. And I take photos. Uh, one of the best stories is we were up on, and I, if, if you're not familiar with it, I, in Gettysburg, there were a couple of different areas, right? So there's Devil's Den that everyone wants to see. There's Round Top. And from Round Top, you can actually, and we're in, I'm in Pennsylvania. I know you guys are elsewhere, but uh, the Pennsylvania monuments, like in the distance that you could see. So, if, so the first, one of the first times I was testing it, I took the photos of everything. Then I went to the Pennsylvania Monument. We filmed a little video. I got back to the camper. I did all the editing on my phone. I used iMovie. Like I used the audio and everything on it. Because one of the key things with AR Launchpad, again, for educators and anybody that uses it, I want them to be able to use the tools that they're familiar with that's, to create the content. So then I do it. I upload it. And so the next day we go and I wait for a bus. I wait for one of those tour buses. And then I'm like scanning the thing and the monument. And people are like, and my wife is standing in the background because I'm like, let me know what they're doing behind me. <laughs> because it's just like beta testing out in the real world. Right? Yeah, so, that's an awesome idea. That's a great, right? That's a great idea. Well, this is a new app that's coming out, you know? But so a lot of my beta testing was in tourism where students would go. The different places. And so what I would say to those companies, Pete, and those organizations and those schools is a lot of us in our camera roll on our phone, if we go back through the last couple of years where we went on vacation, we have video that we shot of our family. We have video of the monuments. We have video and photos of wherever we went. And that now becomes AR content that you could do a virtual tour of the area through augmented reality. <laughs> it, it, what really happens when you're thinking it on, on the level of an educator is, and, 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 and teachers don't give themselves enough credit for this, we're learning all the time. And we're creating content for ourselves there's never been a platform before that we could say, hey, I could share this with the students 
and it's really engaging, right? But when I talk to teachers and they're like, I don't know if I have time, you know, and I get it. Like, I totally understand prep, grading, uh, talking to students, office hours. Like, I know I'm, I'm there with you guys, right? But if I said to you, I have a tool that you could use what you already have and you can add another layer of engagement. So with that, I mean, you could totally make your own cards. You could make your own booklet. Um, one of the things that I will share with you is we're currently working with uh, a couple teachers from Carbondale area uh, school district. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm going to shout out their names, Alicia and Emily. And with Alicia, I had a, a, a follow-up meeting with her and my team today. She is 100% using the platform. She's using Publisher to create the content. And she's doing the major battles of the Civil War with her class. And so the first one that she's working on, which totally geeked me out, it wasn't supposed to be my project to jump in on. But when I heard they were doing Pickett's Charge first, oh, like, geez. I'm like, all right, I got to be in on the meeting, right? Like, so what she's doing is she, when she was learning to be a history teacher, her teacher made her draw the lines for the battle in blue and red. Mm -hmm. And so she's been teaching that of the North and the South and how they lined up for these different battles so that they could talk about strategic positioning what the North and the South were thinking at that time. And so for years, she would just hand draw all these things and hand them out to the students and talk about it. So with AR Launchpad, uh, she got the idea. And, and when we were first talking with her, because again, we believe in, in, in talking with the teachers is, she's like, so can I let them see if they could figure out what the lines of battle would be? And then somehow, they could test themselves. And so what we're what she's doing now is so she has a document that she set up on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper that every student's going to be able to do on their computer or print it out. Right. And it has a frame. It has the key that says blue is the north. Red is the south and a paragraph about Pickett's charge. And inside the frame, it's blank. Right. So that is considered what's called a target. And on the target, that's what people are going to scan. The students will scan. So on another document, she went through and used publisher just to draw the lines of how the lines of battle are. Yeah. She exports it out of publisher as a PNG file, which is transparent. And now the students could draw where they think the lines are. And when they scan it with the app, her lines are on top and they could see how they line up. That's a cool idea. Yeah. And so she's going to piggyback off of that. And this is the cool thing about using AR in the classroom, guys, is as she did that, she's like, what if I split the class into two and half of the class was the North and half of the class was the South? And I have them just draw those battle lines and if i put it on the projector or i do another frame that has a line through it they can actually take their section that is just cut out on little piece of paper tape it up tape it up overlay it and they see if they matched okay. and now it becomes gamification of education and it, and it could potentially change the outcome of that day I mean, if yeah. they really, if she were to take it further, like, you know, how, how if Pickett succeeded in that charge, he would have split the union line, which would have been, uh, well, the, the collapse of the hill. I mean, so it would have. Exactly, Fred. Yeah. Uh, and that's the next thing we were, we were talking about. She's like, so I got a lot, like I was just saying to Pete, is I got a lot of photos and stuff of the battlefields. And I'm like, I have tons of video I shot on my phone. I'll share with you. And so her next thing is, She's going to talk about the specific pieces and have the photos and the students could either open it up on their computer and scan it, or she could have them either print it at home or print it out and give it as a handout 
And now her video and her imagery are there when she's not. It's like having you there. Think about math. Yeah. Like people are like, math can't use this. We have math teachers that are doing calculations and stuff with the, yeah. with the students, and they go over it and they film themselves. Most of us are doing it because we're doing remote or hybrid learning. We already have the videos that we're putting in to our classes that the students mm -hmm. are doing. So now, instead of doing that long form video, you cut it up into the individual ones. And now when the students are working on their homework because their parents are working all day and they can only make up their classes at night, and the parents are like, I'll be honest with you, my, I'm, my wife and I are in education. We're in a little bit higher education. Some of the stuff our kids are doing, I'm like, I, have, I don't know. Like, right? But yes. if I had those, te not where I'm going to go online and I'm going to log into their classroom book and I'm going to look for the video and I'm going to scrub mm -hmm. through like 20 minutes of her presentation, right? But if I know that the handout that she gives us in the packs that we pick up twice a month, I know that she has a target on there and it's for that individual math problem and it's like 10 seconds long. That's going to help me immensely. Wow. You know, everything you're saying though is like, there's a bunch of thoughts that were running through my head before about, and you answered the one question and that was the content creation piece, because the one thing I think we all realize being teachers is when the machine is in motion, you're trying to minimize as much change as possible. But at the same time, I mean, even right now today, I spend time reevaluating a tool that I'm going to put into the classroom. But the, the selling feature is ease of use at this point. I can't, I can't reinvent the wheel. I can't relearn something right now. Now, that may be a, a very taboo or a very bad approach, um, you know, in the traditional, like in, in K through 12 and, and, and in high end, no matter where you are, right? That's probably not a good idea, but we sometimes do it. But I, I love the idea that you're saying that. First of all, you're, you're, you're curating possibly your own content, meaning if you've already taken photos from your summer vacation last year or two years or five years ago, because um, we all have that. I mean, so we're all big fans of Disney in a way and in and, and various ways. And we, we all have thousands of photos of the parks and so on that we could always pull from to make you know memories and so on. Yeah. But it's a neat idea that you're able to provide a tool that's going to allow the teacher to move this forward one, using the tools that they know, and two, it, the, the lift, like the, the learning curve sounds relatively minimal. The, the, the real challenge that comes back to where we were before is that you have to have a little bit of a vision of where you see this being useful. So Pete asked a great question about the theater stuff. And I was thinking about all kinds of things in my head, though, for a moment, Pete, because, you know, my daughter's a theater major, but I was thinking, what if you were to record your actors portraying somebody or doing something, but and then over, you find out in the history classroom that they're covering the topic. Right. So, you know, I mean, so if they're talking about civil rights in, in, your, in the middle school, but you can have the, the, acting, the actors portray, literally portray the actors and they could do the, they could recreate themselves. That was, that was the first thought that came to my mind, but I love the idea that it's an easy lift. I mean, Aaron, you know, you're a techie too. You love adopting tech. And I know, Letitia, you're no alien, you know, foreigner to it, but it's like, it's, it's, it's you don't want to be, messing with it but i love the idea that this this platform is light um that's cool that's very cool so i Thank speaking you. of which i just want to jump back to to pete's question about the performing arts because mm -hmm. i i myself was thinking oh we can take the color purple and create cards for it and then bring a theater to life fiddler on the roof you know, just to, to bring the arts to life now that we are so a quarantine yeah. But could a teacher, a music teacher, do that with their own students? Yeah. Right now. Right. Um, Create a play and make it augmented. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they actually can. Right now, we have a, a couple school districts that we're working with, one of which is Wilkes-Barre STEM Academy. It's all oh. the STEM students. And um, they're using AR Launchpad in the classroom. And I'll show you an example. They did this last year. And what this is, is a yearbook that they produce themselves. We helped them find like somewhere to print it, but right. they, it's their that's headshots. Awesome. And you notice the little rocket that's next to them? Uh -huh. Each one of these are a video message from the students for the other students to remember them by because of COVID as they went through. 
That's so cool. now they took this and the students did all the videos. They got all the graphics. This they awesome. did all the design. One of the students designed the book and everything. Um, and they did all of the, the connection to AR Launchpad through the teacher's account. Um, but now we are working with them and all the students have their own account that's based off of the teachers. And so what they're doing now is the students are taking this concept and they're doing portfolios from ninth grade to 12th. I was just going to say that. Have, yeah, that they have photos of them making robots. And when you scan it, you see the finished product. They have a group project and they write about the groups and they're sending these to colleges right. so that they can right. get in. Take that up to the next level though. Like, so at the college level now you create that portfolio and you send that to the yes. employer with as yep. the, the symbol on your, even to put on your yep. LinkedIn profile or yep. your, your resume or whatever. And then they could click it and they could walk through it or you're walking them through it. Mm -hmm. um, virtually, because that's what LMSs were supposed to do. They were supposed to become mm -hmm. that knowledge base of your experience across yeah. your, your years of learning, but we've, they just don't quite to get the get there. <laughs> but th this is what they're they're working on now. So, and then we have another uh, Hazelton Academy of Science, and they're doing a robotics book, and they're doing uh, the portfolios as well. Like it makes those students stand out, and they're creating the content again. Like I was saying, like with AR Launchpad, you don't. Need you're not designing anything in there. You're using what you know, so the students know how to use Google Docs and Word, so they can create content on there. Cool. And That's they're great. the best. To be honest with you, they're the best at shooting video and photos and uh, and all of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, they are. But, uh, on well, the it's so natural to them. Like that's part of their world. So on the theater side, <laughs> though, um, yeah, you're absolutely correct. I mean. They could write their own play. They could mm -hmm. recite a play. And instead of uh, people going in and not being able to sit in there or whatnot, now you can you can do each part of the play. You can have write-ups mm -hmm. inside it. And it's just as simple as uh, a piece of paper. Like, here's, a, here's another thing. For elementary students, each one of these is a target. And this is almost like the map. So everybody that's listening... I'm I'm showing uh images that are just a a frame and it has the word square and triangle and octagon and circle on it. And so the, the child draws the shape and then talks about it has to point to the sides and how many straight lines and everything. And when they scan this, the actual shape with all the angles and stuff pop up uh, and, and so on. That's and cool. again, it's not replacing. It's putting you with your students when you're not able to be there as well, or it's doing the engagement in the classroom. But I love the theater thing. So if, if Pete came to me and asked me that, I might <laughs> use that idea. That was, a, that was a good question. But yeah, I mean, it's as Fred alluded to before, it's really in the, um, your mind. Like once you start thinking about Thanks. You'd be surprised at how fast it starts flowing. We're like, I could have done this, or I could do this with it, and so on. On our website, it, uh, under the the learn side, we're we're working on building a community of pre done projects for teachers to use too. We do have some Word templates and Pages templates. If anyone's using a Mac, uh, that's going to start growing. We have best practices in there for educators. We have like presidents cards. We have. We have a bunch of examples and stuff that teachers can use that are in the can. The idea is really once teachers start using it, share it with us. And what we do is we vet it to make sure it's educational sound, right? Mm -hmm. And then the teachers get credit for it and it goes into the community that we're building and teachers from everywhere could use it and piggyback off of that and create cool content with their students. Um, but a lot of the stuff, like I said, that we try to do, and even with the free account, is stuff that the teachers are creating or the students are starting to create. Um, you don't need us to come in and do it. We would love for people to have us come in and create because we love doing it. But um, like, here's the here's the uh, the science teacher. So 
these are the pictures of the plant cell. And when you scan it, it actually has arrows to everything. And here's the, the, the regular cells. And again, it's eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper. It's just their content that they've always taught. They're just putting it together. That's awesome. That's cool. Well, Kevin, what we normally do is we're kind of wrapping up. We like to give a little bit of a takeaway. So each of us kind of shares something that either we learned or we're going to take away from the conversation. So do you mind if the four of us go first and then usually we'll we'll leave it to our guests Get it to up. kind of I can't wait to hear. Go ahead. Great. Who would like to go first? Fred. <laughs> <laughs> so for you, you started off because of my the space that I'm in that we kind of share the same space design thinking. I think design thinking solving a problem with the user in mind is, is a very, very significant approach to creating a solution for somebody, right? That it's an approach we all know about it as engineers and scientists and so on, but it's it's something that just seems to get sometimes just kicked to the side. But I'm 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 really happy that you're doing that. And the other thing too is I think the thing that's been ruminating around my head this entire time is content. And I said it before, content curation. We, as teachers, um, we see things through a different lens. We see things that sometimes other people don't see, but we're always capturing. And, and I would say to everybody to keep capturing, you know, and it doesn't always have to be infringing upon student privacy or anything like that, but keep capturing it because it's going to become really valuable to you as a BizVibe tool continues to evolve and people want to start building stuff, you're going to want to have a library. And, and that's going to be, I think that aside from whatever else is out there, but I think content curation is going to become something teachers need to keep on honing and, and developing. Where they put all their stuff after their storage runs out, who knows? But we'll solve that problem later. Great. Letitia? Well, Kevin, so I think the word that's coming out or that, that was jumping out at me as you were talking actually is the empathy part of design thinking, right? <laughs> I feel like you were just very intentional, and I love that. But I also like the sense of community, that although you know, you're excited about the tool itself and your passion comes through pretty clearly, um, visuals and all, I mean, you had those things on hand, Kevin. <laughs> but um, I love the idea of community and collaboration. You know, like, let's share, let's build a community. If you're doing something great, you know, let's let's share so that we can back to you, uh, uh, build the content, you know, and, and share and build community. And I think once the community is, is built, you feel safer to use it. I think that's what happened with the whiteboard. <laughs> we were slammed in there. I remember it clearly. And for a long time, it was just a movie projector for me because no one was there <laughs> to answer my questions after. Um, but then you're told you have to do it. So I really love the community aspect, and if we have any uh, leaders out there that control budgets, I think relationships and, and dealing with teachers that create things, I think is a best bet because of that intentionality and empathy. So thank you for your empathy. Well, thank you. And thank you. Yeah, uh, in our time together, I've uh, installed the app <laughs> in four clicks. Just four clicks. I have a little augmented Fred. Right oh here. no! Right now, no. I've been. You cannot. I got you a little a demo, right? Because let's face it, you can't ever get enough Fred Abley, and he's just right here. He's under the table. Gosh! <laughs> no, Jesus. Anyway, <laughs> Kevin, this is how we roll around here. It's all good. Um, Thank goodness I didn't have Oculus glasses on. That's right. I'm going to have to log in and see that yeah, remove target. your Oculus, please, or Oculi. I don't know what the Oculi. I have a little <laughs> rocket icon on them. It's great. Um, <laughs> if I had to sum up everything, what you're talking about, what you're sharing with us tonight and enlightening us, uh, it's the next evolution of storytelling. Uh, I live in that world. It, it's storytelling. And when you look at it that way, maybe for some people who are reluctant to take on another thing, it might not be so challenging, might not be so daunting when you look at it that way. Um, so uh, you keep the human aspect in the technology. It's a tool, storytelling tool. So thank you very much. Well, thank you. Nice, Pete. So I've got two. One is I'm taking away QR codes are ugly. I think I think that's our next T-shirt idea, Pete. Yes, I want one of those. Okay. Wear those in the pitches. That Don't even so talk awesome. to me about QR codes; they're ugly. The other thing is, I keep thinking about 
field trip. So I, I always like to try to immerse my students, you know, in literature and to, to think about the time period, think about what's going on, the setting and the tone and the history. And field trips have just been impossible even before COVID. It just, there's no money for it, or it's a whole red tape thing to try to get the bus. Um, if it costs money, it's not equitable. So what I like about this is that I can take my kids on a field trip from our classroom, right? And I used to joke with the kids sometimes and say, you know, like if we were, if I was going to show some paintings from a certain time period before we read a play or, or, or a story, I would have them imagine where, where do you want to go? Should we go to New York? Should we go to Paris? And we would literally just imagine sitting in the classroom that we're being transported to this place. Well, now I feel like this is, that was OG. So this is a little <laughs> bit, you know, more uh, up to their speed. So um, yeah. I'm excited about the possibility of bringing the world to, to more children. That's a neat idea. Yeah, that's, that is awesome when you think about it that way, right? So yeah. thank you guys for oh. the, the kind words. I'm, I'm glad that you, you liked the presentation and I hope that I answered all your questions. And if I didn't, you you know where to cut, get a hold of me, and I'm so tell, always tell our audience actually, Kevin. Where can they find you if they want to uh, try? Yeah. To connect? So uh, the company's name is Viz Vibe. That's and, I, and I'll do the old thing. V is in Vic, I is in in, Z is in Zoo, V is in Vic, I is in in, B is in Bob, and E is in Earl. VizVibe.com or ARLaunchpad.com, and you'll see. Uh, the offer that I have for teachers, as soon as you get on the site, you log into that page and you can sign up for your account. Um, and, you know, with, with, this, with our company, if you get a phone call from somebody it, it, or you're a teacher that's interested in this or a school district, you're going to talk to me. Like, you're not going to talk to, like, you're going to talk to us as opposed to a big team of sales reps and stuff. Um, and I, and that's, that's the way I want the company culture to be. Like if you're an educator working with VizVibe, you're talking to us because we're your partner with it. Um, you can also, uh, check me out on LinkedIn. I love getting connections on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn forward slash in forward slash VizVibe or at on Twitter at Jones class is my handle. Um, or you can just follow VizVibe on Twitter as well and Instagram and so on. And my email is kevin at vizvibe.com. And just reach out and say, hey, I was, I was listening to Teacher's Pep Rally, and I'd like to get AR and, and, and or I'll talk to it. I love talking to classes, too, and, and just talking about the different things. So we want this tool to be in the hands of educators and students. Pete, if people want to uh, continue to follow us at Teacher's Pep Rally here. Gosh, we love getting feedback and connecting with fellow educators. You can reach out to us on our Facebook page, YouTube, our website, www.teacherpeprally.com. And oh my goodness, wouldn't it be nice if you left a little review for us saying how great it was hearing everything tonight? If you leave a great review for us, I will send you an augmented Fred. <laughs> you can have him for a week. <laughs> That's a deal. Doesn't get any better than that. Love it. Loner. The <laughs> Fred <worry>. Loner. <laughs> well, thank you, uh, Kevin, again. This has been a, a pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, Kevin. That concludes our amazing conversation at the Teachers Pep Rally. Aaron, Fred, Pete, and Letitia would like to remind you that their thoughts and opinions don't necessarily reflect their schools or institutions. This platform is open to everyone. Until next time, go get them. Here at the Teacher's Pep Rally, we are thrilled that you spend time with us and pop in on our conversations. We don't take it lightly and want you to remain connected. To hear past episodes, learn more about what Aaron, Fred, Pete, and Letitia are up to beyond the Teacher's Pep Rally, visit teacherpeprally.com. Until next time and our next conversation. <laughs>